You are listening to the Fringe Radio Network. FringeRadioNetwork.com You're listening to Earth Oddity, a weekly odyssey into all the oddity planet Earth has to offer. And now, serving it up, are Christopher Tiny Sullivan and John Long. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Earth Oddity. We're glad that you're joining us uh, from around the globe, from here at home, from across the United States, the Fruited Plain, some would say. Or even across the pond. Or across the pond. That's true. Uh, we're glad that you're here with us for another episode. I've had an excellent day today. I dominated selling furniture, sold a ton <laughs> of furniture today, which I don't normally get to work on the floor selling. Mm-hmm. And when I do, I'm normally just holding customers for the salesman. So today I actually got to be a salesman again, and it was fun. It's fun stuff. Uh, but cool. I had a good day. And I'm here, ready tonight to do a great podcast. And mm-hmm. Let me welcome in my co-host, Mr. Christopher Tiny Sullivan. How, How are you? y'all doing? Yeah, good. He's here. <laughs> He's with us. And I had a great day as well. All right. Uh, you know, played a lot of Minecraft with my son. Excellent. Uh, babysat my other son. Excellent. And uh, you know, played with baby toys on the floor. Yeah. Get the get out the old uh, relaxing. Yeah. What's the little thing you put them on that's got the stuff over top of them? Do y'all have one of those? I can't remember what it's called. Yeah, but he's crawling. He's, oh. He doesn't do that. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. That's right. He is. He has grown. <laughs> I forget. I forget. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's not walking yet. Eli, no. he was already running oh, at yeah. this stage when he was that age. I, but, you know, uh, he's standing up. He's cruising. Yeah. It seems like when mine started walking is when they started stopped putting everything in their mouth, which was like a relief for me. You know, <laughs> right. Because like, you would just walk around and they would have something in their mm-hmm. mouth. You're like, where did you find a razor blade at, son? <laughs> Let me get that away from you. So. <laughs> Um, you got any great stories this we week? We have lab-grown meat. We have Burger King taking on AIs okay. as a marketing firm. <laughs> nice. That's nice. Uh, I got one here about how young voters don't know where to buy stamps for, to mail in their absentee ballot. So I think that's kind of amusing as an old man. I was about to say. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, like back in my day, we knew where to get stamps. So, yeah. What did... Uh, I wonder what, what did our parents do that we knew nothing about that they probably laughed at us for? Oh, there's probably all I'm kinds sure there's of tons of stuff, yeah, but right. I can't remember. I uh, had a bad habit of not listening right. to my people older than me when I was a teenager. Me too. So Me too. It's really <laughs> one of my strongest skills as a teenager. <laughs> uh, to tune out the older generation. Yeah. I do point out to my kids that there was no internet, you know, while That I is was true. That's one of up. the that's a huge thing. Yeah. They said that there's a, a real stark difference between our generation yes. and the next generation yeah. because we remember the world without the internet. Right. But then at the same time, we've become just as, you know, yeah, we're just as dependent in. on the internet yeah. as, as the next generation. So we right. really kind of span the gap here right. of just the world in two very, very different places. But man, I remember, you know, I was out of high school when it came to Fayette. Mm-hmm. And I went to the computer lab at Bevel. And got on the internet. I opened up Netscape Navigator. Then I was like, what do you do? I just heard about (laughs) it. I didn't know what you did on it or anything. So, yeah, it was kind of wild. I remember thinking... I don't, why, why do I have to do school anymore? Because from now on, if I have any questions, I can immediately just look it up. Well, you know, and I will not to sound too much like an old man and I know we got a show to do. I think that's a big problem with people is they don't develop like critical thinking as Mm -hmm. well as they used to because all of their answers are at their fingertips, you know? Right. Uh, so when my kids ask me stuff all the time, I'm just like, figure it out, you know, <laughs> right. Uh, you can't use your phone, see mm-hmm. what happens. And sometimes disaster happens and sometimes it doesn't, but I think it's a good exercise for them. Cause I'm feeling like if I can get my kids who all seem to be, at least at this point, 
above average intelligence mm-hmm. to develop a little bit of personality and a little bit of critical thinking, then they can dominate the world, you know, mm-hmm. because everyone else is going to be a nerd who only knows about their phone. So, right. Uh, that's what I, that's my goal. Gotcha. So, well, I tell you what, you know, Mr. Uh, Kurzweil, Ray Kurzweil, he says that there's going to come a point where this little phone that we have is actually going to be integrated, like, into us. Okay, Mark of the Beast. Not doing that. <laughs> not doing that. Okay, not doing it. Not going to do it. <laughs> so, well, I mean, it kind of freaks me out, too. But yeah. just think about when you want to Google something, what if you didn't have to type into Google or ask Google? You just thought, hey, Google, yeah. whatever, right. and then it just pops in your head. Well, that's neat. But also... <laughs> Like, it's not that hard to type into Google, you know? It's like people, I, there's a comedian who's got a joke about people who are like mad because their flight was delayed. You know, like, hey, you load the plane, you got to sit on the runway for 30 minutes or whatever. Yeah. And people get so upset about that. But he's like, look, you are about to break the bonds of gravity and fly across the country in a couple of hours. And you're stressing out and getting mad over 30 minutes of your time that was, you know, wasted on the thing. I, I just hey, think, man, 80 years. Yeah, I know. Time is money. That's Seconds true. are precious. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I'm just saying I can type. I'll be I'll be holding my phone. I'll be like one of those guys that still has a flip phone now that everybody makes fun of. <laughs> yes. I'll be the one that's still Googling stuff, <laughs> typing it in like that way. So, And I'm like, just think it, John. Yeah, oh, right. wait, you haven't got your no, implant you yet. You got your implant. I'm like, I've read Res- Revelation. <laughs> and then I would say, well, you know what? I've just read Revelation 2. It's in my head automatically because <laughs> of my implant. I read it in Hebrew. I read it in Greek. I read it. <laughs> and the Bible doesn't say anything about Google or the internet or implants or any of that stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, We're want- way off. Yeah, we went way off. Do you want to kick it off? Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, we actually had a bit of a slow week this week. The, yeah, it was a slow the, week. The earth was plenty odd, but it was more normal yeah. than nor- than usual. Well, oddest in the Senate Judiciary Committee, but we're not getting into that. That was probably <laughs> yes. the oddest place in, in the world this week. <laughs> yes. But we're not getting into that. But you know somebody that we hadn't talked about in a long time is Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. And we used to follow him pretty closely. Yeah, right. And then just, he started smoking weed. We had to stop because <laughs> we're Baptists. <laughs> yes. He has, not left, uh, he has not left our ever watchful vigilance or whatever. Yeah. But we haven't talked about him in a while. So this was actually kind of last week's news. But uh, the, the Dear Moon, hashtag Dear Moon Project, yeah. uh, SpaceX... Oh, it's not like a hunting camp somewhere? <laughs> no, it's like not. Me and the boys going down to Deer Moon this weekend, baby. Okay. All right. So, Space Project. Gotcha. Yeah, SpaceX. They are sending the world's first tourist on a uh, moonshot. Okay. And it's it's not going to touch down to the moon. All it's going to do is is take off and head there and then slingshot around and come back. I think it's uh-huh. going to be, what, a five-day trip or something like that? Okay. And somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. So, they're getting to see the dark side of the moon. <laughs> I guess so. Favorite Pink Floyd album. <laughs> so I've kind of seen it too. I have listened to uh, the Pink, the I have listened to the Dark Side of the Moon. Yeah. While watching Wizard of Oz. Uh, me too. <laughs> and, uh, me too. Me too. Kind of neat. Very neat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, this Japanese billionaire, his name is. Oh yeah. Yusaku Mezawa. Okay. Uh, that's the best. Right back at you, buddy. <laughs> that's the best a redneck's going to do. <laughs> um, he is going to the moon. He is, I don't know how exactly how much he's spending, but it's, you know, several billion dollars to right. go. And he's he doesn't want to go alone. He wants to take eight artists okay. with him. All right. If, if, of a variety of artists? I don't know. This I got an article here. Uh, it says, this is from The Verge. Uh, which artist should SpaceX send to the moon? Okay. Which, I don't know if that's a really a fair article, because it's really which artist should uh, Yasuku yeah, take invite, with him. Yeah, invite with him. Right. Hmm. I, I remember that in the press conference, uh, Elon Musk was asked, you know, why did you choose him? And and Elon quickly spoke up and said, we didn't we didn't choose him. He chose us. Oh, okay. He, he, con- he Contacted us and asked about chartering I mean, a flight, and that's our, that's yeah. what that's what SpaceX is. That's their business. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Because you know? he's got the cash, right? Because you know? like, yeah. he ponied up the money to do it. So, hmm, I wonder who he'll take. I don't know. 
I would think. Uh, I mean, I don't. Know. I mean, what? I don't know what people like him are into. I don't know what super rich people do for fun. You know, mm-hmm. outside of go to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that is a brilliant way to get invited to all the best parties between That's now true. and <laughs> everybody's going to be hanging those. out with Little Wayne. He's going to be hanging out with LeBron. Yeah, I don't know. Would you consider LeBron an artist? He is on the basketball court, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, a physical, you know, like ballet is like an uh, art. Personally, I consider podcasters artists. That's true. You think <laughs> we can get on there? There's no way. <laughs> they, would, they would, like, kick us off at about that, like, Van Allen radiation belt or whatever. We could uh, we could start a new podcast called Moon Oddity, <laughs> where we uh, talk about how weird it is that we somehow... You know, snookered our way onto this flight. <laughs> Look, if there's one thing my children will tell you, you don't want to be locked up with me in an airtight place because things would get really weird and not good. So that is an interesting thought. Just think, he's going to be on on a spaceship. Yeah, literally, he's yeah. going to be on a spaceship with six to eight artists. Yeah. And I guess they're going to blast off, and they're like high five and whoa, and then <laughs> we're doing it. The man. next day, we're we're going to the moon, <laughs> and then the day after that, yeah, we're we're still going. Yeah, we're all still together. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, it's going to be like really, really quick. They're going to you know shoot around the moon, yeah, and then come back, and then I guess you got a, a several days where you're just hanging out, hanging out on an RV in space That's on right. the way back to Earth. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Put like a 12-pack of beer in there and rock and roll. <laughs> I don't know. You're going to... uh He's going to be the first one, though, to see the entire Earth yeah. since the Apollo missions, they said. Oh, okay. Because, well, because I mean, we got the ISS yeah. up there, but it's... Yeah, it's rotating and the Earth's rotating too. Yeah, and yeah. you still you still can't like it's see closer. the entire Earth outside of the porthole or whatever. Well, that's what NASA so. wants you to believe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, I got an idea for one of the celebrities here mm-hmm. that he may take with him, and I'm going to throw Little Zan's name into the pot. <laughs> uh, I'm sure our audience. <laughs> consisting of people probably our age are really familiar with little Zan, but little Zan is apparently a hip hop artist yes. uh, who once dated Noah Cyrus. He is, which is probably the, uh, the most, that's like his biggest accomplishment so yeah. far. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'll tell you this much about him. Cause I did a little research cause I like to prepare for the show like that is, uh, his, <laughs> His uh, breakout hit, Betrayed, was certified platinum, and it peaked at number 64 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. So oh, put man. that in your pipe and smoke it. Just missed it. I usually <laughs> check out after 60. Like 60 so and above. <laughs> it, it just didn't quite make it on my radar. Uh, Little Zan's stage name, as you might imagine, is derived from the drug Xanax, because why not? You right. Know, apparently, he doesn't love his parents enough to <laughs> pick a normal rapid name that involves something with ice or anything like that. So, <clears throat> but anyways, he had a rough little week here. Broke up with his girlfriend, or his girlfriend dumped him at some point. Right. And uh, then Little Zan warms flaming hot Cheetos are uh, one heck of a drug after a <laughs> hospital trip. <laughs> we all love flaming hot Cheetos. Um, Little Zan is blaming a recent hospital trip on a certain spicy snack, Flaming Hot Cheetos. The rapper, whose real name is Diego Linos, uh, delved into gory details about what about what happened in in a Monday Instagram video. This is a quote from from Zanny here. Uh, I just want to let everyone know that I was in the hospital, not due to any drugs, but I guess I (laughs) ate too many hot Cheetos and it ripped something in my stomach open a little bit and I puked a little blood. So we good, the 22 year old told his fans. Now I will say if you eat enough flaming hot Cheetos, it'll rip something open on you. (laughs) It it ain't your tummy a little further down. Also be careful. Hot Cheetos are one of a drug little Zan stressed in the video caption uh, others weighed in on the scary situation in the comment section because we all know comments on the internet are where all wisdom is derived from <laughs> uh, 
man, I eat hot Cheetos all the time, one user wrote. And another one urged caution, telling little Zan, bro, you got to be safe with them hot Cheetos, too. <laughs> be safe with everything you put in your body, homie. Uh, another Here's another comment. Glad you're okay. Those hot Cheetos don't play, a supporter told the musical artist. Uh, the rapper teased the hospital trip, giving fans a glimpse of an ambulance on his Instagram story before talking about the health scare, which is the first thing. Anytime I have a health scare, I think to do is, uh, let's put it on my Instagram story. So everyone else can see <laughs> what's, what's going on. Uh, Frito-Lay, which makes the snack did not immediately respond to Fox news for comment, but I guarantee you they're enjoying the publicity. Right. Um, but it's clear Little Zan is bouncing back from the gruesome injury since he's already discussing his next tour. Hmm. Um, New York, we come, and he announced in the clip he's slated to perform in New York on Wednesday night. For everybody up there, go check out the Little Zan show. Bring him some Flaming Hot yeah. Cheetos. If you don't throw Flaming Hot Cheeto bags on the stage from now on, like if his fans don't, <laughs> I I don't I don't think they have any guts. That would know? be great if That's that just became do. his thing. Yeah, right. From now on, exactly. Yeah, Flaming Hot Cheetos. That's what they should do. Um, Which, you know, also, not only are they flaming hot, they're also dangerously cheesy. So yeah. it's just a risky snack all the way around. But listen, I'm going to say this. Here's some more information in the article. In July, Renee Craighead of Memphis, Tennessee, just up the road from us, claimed her 17-year-old daughter had her gallbladder removed to combat problems that stem from her consuming around four big bags of hot snacks a week, like hot Takis and hot fries. We do see tons of gast. Ooh, I should have asked my wife how to say this. Gastritis and ulcer-related stuff due to hot chips, said Dr. Gary Gavender, a gastroenterologist at the La Bon Hur Children's Hospital. And he added that the hospital sees about 100 kids a month easily who come in with stomach problems. So they ain't playing now. Hmm. Uh, at, here's a uh, statement here. Uh, at the time... Back when this all happened, Frito-Lay released this statement. Uh, At Frito-Lay, food safety is always our number one priority, and our snacks meet all applicable food safety regulations as well as our rigorous rigorous quality standards. Some consumers may be more sensitive to spicy foods than others and may choose to avoid spicier snacks due to personal preference. So anyways, heads up to everybody out there. Don't be eating a lot of hot Cheetos, flaming hot Cheetos, because it might make you sick. Uh, secondly, if you ever decide to name yourself Little Zan, <laughs> I mean, you're setting yourself up for a life of hard times anyways, I feel like. And he's got face tats. You know, I mean, we may have some listeners with face tats, and I don't want to offend you. But I feel like when you start getting tattoos on your face, is like when you've decided normal society is not for you. I will say this, and I don't want to... You know, I have tattoos. Oh, yeah. You know, and I don't have anything against oh, yeah. people with tattoos. Okay. I, do. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh. I don't have any facial tattoos. No. I will say, though. Get an Earth Oddity one right here, <laughs> right on your cheek. Since no one can see where I'm pointing, yeah. right on your cheek. I will say that um, before you get a facial, facial tattoo, you need to be successful and have all yeah, your money made. Probably true. Because you don't want to be going to a job interview yeah. with a facial tattoo. Yeah. I mean,. And I, I'm I'm not a tattoo guy. I think we've discussed it before. Yes. I'm just not a tattoo guy. It's not my thing. You know, <laughs> everybody's got tattoos now. I'd rather be unique and not have right. one. But uh, if you're going to get one, just don't don't go with your face. I mean, just leave your face alone. You know, <laughs> or have your money made. True. You know, yeah, I think true. if you're Elon Musk, you can probably yeah. do what you want. What about the people who put those big disc things in their ears? Whatever they're called. You know what I'm talking about. They like pierce their ears, but it's like a yeah. I know what you're talking about. You know, like yeah, yeah. A Pringle can lid in there or whatever. <laughs> right. I don't. I don't get that either. I thought that maybe got better reception. <laughs> <laughs> if you did that, I don't know. Well, I know that tribes in Africa do it. There's like a tribe in Africa who does it. But uh-huh. all I ever see doing it are like white kids, and I'm gonna be like, that's cultural appropriation. <laughs> I don't know how y'all are getting away with it, but that's cultural appropriation. So, yeah. 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 But anyways, nobody's listening to me. <sighs> nobody's looking at 41 year old John for any type of you know advice on what's hip or cool. They were in eighth grade, but not they anymore. were yes in eighth grade, but not now. <laughs> Uh, we've talked about AI on this show. We have on multiple occasions. Yeah, we're scared and of how it. one day it will probably rule humanity. Yes. Yes. If if it doesn't find humanity humanity 
what's the word I'm trying to say here? If it doesn't find us irrelevant, true, and uh, renders us useless, <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh, if we somehow survive the right. apocalypse, then you yeah, know, we will be ruled over by robot NAI, overlords by Google. Yeah, yeah, and oh yeah. Google, Google will be telling us what to yes, do. Yes, right. Google and Facebook. Zuckerberg's already a robot. We all, I mean, everybody <laughs> knows that, right? Yes. I mean, that's not even a joke. He's definitely a robot. But I will say we're not there yet. We've got a ways to go. And Burger King, they've actually had a, an AI that's been writing some of their commercials. Nice. And uh, I'll just I'll just let the audience be the judge here. Okay. Because right, I haven't heard it. I'm ready. Is it bird? Is it plane? It was bird. Now it's chicken fries. <laughs> Burger King logo's chicken is the new potato. We are not sorry. The potato deserved this. Chicken fries from Burger King. Forget the potato. I'm on board with this. Burger King logo I love appears. It. I think that's great. I think that's great. You want to hear another one? Sure. The Whopper is back. It never <laughs> left, but it's back. Flame grilled, just like you. With vegetables, fresh and flying, just like you. The Whopper lives in a bun mansion, just like you. <laughs> Order yourself today. Burger King. Have a Uruguay. Have a Uruguay. <laughs> PK logo appears. Well, first of all, I want to say, number one, Burger King, uh, you now owe Earth Oddity Podcast $2,000 for playing your ad. <laughs> Uh, you're welcome. We have a quite a big reach. We're big all over the world. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you're welcome for that. And you can um, hit us up, earthoddity at planetmail.net, uh, to get in- information as far as how you want to get us our, our money for that. So <laughs> just we'll throw that out there real quick. Yeah. Since we play in your ads for free. <laughs> we accept. <laughs> you just said we're playing them for free. Well, I mean, we just... <laughs> What I meant to say <laughs> was that we played them, and now you owe us. So until you pay us, then it's free. And I don't want to have to get lawyers involved and all that. So the easiest thing to do would be to pay us the money. Yes. Right. Because, you know, my legal team is, is quite strong. Yes. It would give OJ's legal team a run for his money. So <laughs> I'm just saying, you don't want to tangle with us in a court of law. But that's pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty uh it's something else. I will say that uh it makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, that, true. The AI has got a ways to go. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's not there yet. <laughs> but I mean I would like to go to Burger King now. Yeah. I am kinda hungry. All I have is a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for dinner. <laughs> Deidre sent me a text and was like, Do you want me to pick up some dinner when I get off work? And I was like, Oh, I'll do whatever you want. But in my mind I was like, I hope you say yes. I hope you do it. <laughs> and then she showed up, she's like, I figured we'd eat sandwiches tonight and I was like, Oh, Okay. All right. Well, yeah, that's funny because I distinctly remember I offered to bring a did. pizza. Over you did offer, and I turned it down. And you were all like, "You were like, no, nah, I'm just going to eat something on the way back I, from wherever." Right. But then she sent me that text before I even <laughs> left, and I was like, "Well, if she's considered it. She's going to do it." But she didn't. She didn't. You have refuses no one to blame to, but yourself, John. Re- refuses to come on the podcast too. Just throw that in there. Sitting in the other room. Well, she. I mean, she is watching Down Abbey. So. Yeah. True. Yeah. Whatever. Nerd. No! She, her, not you, her. Gotcha. Okay, so let's move on to our next story, which is one that you put in the Facebook group this week. Um, this comes from OregonLive.com. Now, everybody knows Oregon's famous for the rednecks. Uh, <laughs> everybody knows that. Uh, Oregon woman steals ambulance as medics perform CPR, goes on a wild 30-mile joyride, cops say. Sure, Christy Lynn Woods, 37, may have boast, boosted an ambulance while paramedics performed CPR on an unconscious woman in southern Oregon. Sure, she then led police officers, sheriff's deputies, and state troopers on a high-speed chase up Interstate 5 for nearly 30 miles, ambulance lights flashing the whole way. And yes, she is accused of ramming a cop car off the freeway as her speedometer hit not 85 miles per hour. gum. But, seated and handcuffed in the back of a patrol car on Sunday, Woods apparently wanted to know what all the fuss was about. (laughs) I was a good blanking driver, she reportedly (laughs) told Officer Chris Bonebreak. Awesome name, Chris Bonebreak. I feel like you should... I wish my name was Bonebreak. (laughs) That should be like your wrestling name, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Tiny Bonebreak. Uh Anyways, that's what she told Officer Chris Bonebreak, court records filed in Douglas County show. Uh, I didn't try to hurt anyone. Furthermore, Woods seemed to think the whole thing wasn't her fault. 
Why did they have it unlocked? She asked. <laughs> According to a probable cause. Clearly affidavit. they were asking for this. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, clearly the paramedics. <laughs> right. right. I mean, they why didn't... did they not I mean, why did they not lock the door before trying to they save somebody? They probably life? left it running too. I no, bet I'm you sure. I bet you they thought they were just gonna hop yeah. out and, <laughs> right. and get this person who needs emergency medical care and take them straight to the hospital. Right. They were they were asking for it, clearly. <laughs> The wild episode began just before 3.30 p.m., a little earlier in the day than I expected this to happen. Yeah, this is yeah. usually a, this is like, <laughs> after I've midnight. One on. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when emergency paramedics rushed to the aid of an unconscious woman at an apartment building on Southeast Jackson Street in downtown Roseburg. Everybody knows where that is. Uh, as the medics attempted to revive the woman, police say Woods, a, a local with a lengthy and colorful rap sheet, apparently came across the ambulance parked outside on the street. No bother, Woods decided to fire up the engine and take off. The mm-hmm. medics, who needed to take their patient to the hospital, returned to find their emergency vehicle missing. Okay, so I thought they were in the back with a person. <laughs> okay. So that would have been even No, they wilder. went inside to get the patient, yeah, and then well, they I come back they, like, out, and they're out. like, hey... Uh, yeah. hey, hey Tim, did, uh, did you move the ambulance? Did you leave the keys in there? <laughs> uh, soon after, an Oregon State Trooper on patrol attempted to pull Woods over while she cruised around downtown. Instead, the woman pulled onto the freeway, hit the emergency lights, and stepped on the gas. Oh, no. The ambulance chase was on. Wood reached speeds of 85 miles per hour as she raced north on I-5. At one point, near milepost 130, she rammed a state police cruiser that was driving in front of the ambulance in an attempt to divert traffic. Golly. The collision sent the cop car careening into the highway's wire median, which shaved the light bar off the top of the vehicle completely and shattered the windshield. I feel oh, like man. this is going to be an attempted murder charge. On I like her. to think of that scene, and I don't remember which one, but one of the Smokey and the Bandits where the car... Does it blow up and yeah. like the deputies are just holding yeah, up the right. lights yes. and just riding shotgun? Yeah. Uh, there was so much dirt and debris from the crash that I could not see the roadway for about a second, wrote Bone Break, who was uh, tailing the suspect. The trooper inside luckily suffered minor injuries. Uh, Woods drove about another 16 miles before officers managed to slash the ambulance's tires with spike strips across the road. She eventually pulled off the freeway and into a gas station leapt from the ambulance, and immediately dropped to the ground. I gave up when I should, she informed Bowen (laughs) No, no, you took it a little far, in my opinion. Uh, On her way to the Douglas County Jail, Woods seemed truly astonished by the whole string of events. Oh, my God, I can't believe I just did that, she said, the record show. Um, She was booked on 13 charges, including assault, interfering with an EMT. Didn't even know that was a crime. (laughs) <laughs> Criminal mischief and reckless driving. Court records show Woods has had multiple run-ins with the law in recent years. In February, she was convicted of attempting to clobber bar patrons with a bottle at the Idle Hour Tavern, yelling racial slurs, and later kicking a police officer. This hmm. time, she may have taken things a bit too far. She seemed to concede to bone break. Uh, blank, she reportedly said, I'm going to prison. Uh, yeah, which, I mean, that's, you definitely should go to prison for that. <laughs> yes, yeah. I agree. Did it ever say what happened to the lady who was unconscious? I mean, I hope. Did they have to get another ambulance, I'm sure, I guess? yeah. I Golly. Mean, you know, and I, I don't think you can fault the paramedics. I'm sure never in a million years. Because usually everyone is on the same side with firefighters and paramedics. Cops, they kind of got a rough road to ride. They really you know? do. Because yeah. they're dealing with... Yeah. Now, I know that there's, I think cops are just like people. Sure. There are some good ones out there and Absolutely. there are some bad ones out there. Absolutely. But you got to understand that the cops typically aren't dealing with your everyday citizens right. unless they're directing traffic. Yes. Or well, maybe they're, you know, pulling you over and giving you a speeding ticket when you didn't deserve it. And I'll say this, <laughs> my, uh, well, two of my cousins are state troopers, but one of them said this to me one time and it mm-hmm. made a big impact on me. And he said, uh... <clears throat> And this was years ago when he first got to do it because I was giving him a hard time. You know, right. All cops are all mean and stuff. And he was like, well, you know. It's bacon. You smell bacon? <laughs> he was like, you know, he's like, we may pull over a thousand people, 
and only one of them will want to kill us. He's like, but we don't know which one that is. And right. He's like, and sometimes it's the most normal looking guy, and sometimes it's the most thugged out looking guy, and sometimes it's the redneck, and sometimes it's the woman, and we don't know. So we got to treat everybody like they're going to kill us. And I was like, you know, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Me, you know, <laughs> I, could, I can understand that. So. Usually people don't want to kill me until they've gotten to know me a little bit first. Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. No, I agree. I keep waiting for my wife to kill me. I really do. I'm just like, she'd probably be better off without me anyway. So. Well, she's got to make it look like an accident, John. Yeah, I know. She's probably <laughs> slowly poisoning me. Yeah. Well. What's the meme where uh, uh, the lady's like, if you were my husband, I'd poison your coffee. And the guy's like, well, if you were my wife, I would drink it. <laughs> <laughs> She really bought some horrible tasting coffee here, and I don't, I mean, I want to get off on it, but it could be poison. It tastes like the bottom <laughs> of my shoe. And uh, what's well, weird, because we got a Keurig, you know? Yes. Thanks, Mom. Mom's listening. She gave it to us. Uh, that we had, like, two different kinds, and she would, like, fish through the bowl and get out the good kind, and so I was just stuck drinking the dirty kind for <laughs> the past month, and I've just quit drinking it. I was like, I'll get coffee when I get to work. Or whatever. You know they got they have the little uh, reusable filters. Yes, yes they that, do. That's what we have. We have and one of those, and we did that for a while. But I don't know why we're not doing it anymore. <laughs> I, mean, I have a good answer. We just stopped doing it. We're well, like, I'll, yeah, well, I'll that's say, I'll we say, got a big pot like you can put under it. You know, the cur- uh, it's called a giraffe. Is that what it's called? <laughs> it was called a giraffe. Okay, but I call it a giraffe. All right, but yeah, yeah, we had that uh, reusable thing. Yeah, we yeah. still got it. It's up in the cabinet. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. That's what we do at my house. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> well, that's anyways. <coughs> Been a long day. All right. Indiana school bus driver caught on video allegedly allowing kids as young as 11 to drive her vehicle. Okay. <laughs> wow. So it was a, I was going to say it was the bus driver from The Simpsons. You know, I can't <laughs> remember his name, but he was like the coolest bus driver. When I saw this, because I try to look for the good in everybody, I try sure. to I try to give people the benefit of the doubt, right? And and you know, at least humanly speaking, I think there are more good people than bad. I agree with that. So at first, I thought maybe this was just driver's ed. <laughs> you know, maybe, <laughs> maybe this is like the the trade school program. Yeah. Kids are going for their CDLs, <laughs> make a wish, or something like that. <laughs> yes, apparently that wasn't the case. <laughs> A Northwest Indiana school bus driver has been arrested after she allegedly let three students, ages 11, 13, and 17, drive her vehicle, according to police. The incident was caught on video and posted to Twitter. All so, right. Yeah. Man. That's tough. Twitter's going to get you. You got to be careful. Twitter will ruin everybody. It, it, it might ruin you 30 years from now. Right. So. Yes. Yeah. No. You may have posted a joke like when it started and it'll come back on you. <laughs> yes. Which, by the way, is totally off the subject. But if you will go, if you ever have time, any of my listeners, so I, it's the LA Chargers now. Mm-hmm. So years ago, when Twitter first started, it was just a dude who had the, you know, at Chargers or whatever it is handle for it <laughs> yes. before the team bought it for him. And uh, so like all the tweets, he was a big Chargers fan. Some of them were about the Chargers. And then others would be like, I'm really hungry. Me and my wife, we're going to go eat at Olive Garden tonight. <laughs> and know? everyone's following him because yeah. they think it's well, the official. <laughs> then, then the Chargers bought it from him. Or actually, I think he uh, he he uh, agreed to be the social media manager for the Chargers. That's awesome. For them to get use of the channel. And I'm sure he's been fired since then. But uh, – <laughs> but, uh, if you still scroll back on the very beginning, it's just like that dude's personal, you know, <laughs> tweets on their Twitter. It's actually quite humorous because he's like, "Boy, I'm re- getting really hungry," you know, <laughs> things like that. It's pretty neat. Anyway, you know, that's that's brilliant. We're we're underscore Earth Oddity because yeah. somebody else has at somebody Earth Oddity. It, right. Maybe we should just ask them to be our social, social media, media person because we don't ever right. We like tweet what once a week I, when an episode I, comes out. I, well, you handle the Twitter. I will say I did. I put two posts up on Instagram this week. So I feel like you like I've, doubled your workload. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't want to brag or anything and you don't have to thank me for my service or anything like that. <laughs> right. But I did put up two posts. So everybody, all of our Instagram followers, which yeah. is growing, it's growing slowly, but surely it's out doing our Twitter. 
Well, a lot of them, I think, are other podcasts who want me to follow them back. And yeah. I like put a million hashtags up and people go there and follow me. And I'm not following you back. You know, I only follow <laughs> people that are cool back. So I don't know who you are, Divine Justice Podcast or whatever Uh-oh. your name is. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah. I don't know. I made that up, but oh, I'm sure that, okay. that's a good podcast name if <laughs> yes. you want to. To, if anybody wants to take that, I've trademarked it. You have to pay me, but you know, <laughs> anyways, back to the story. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> according to the police statement, uh, Jondra McTee, 27, yeah, right. let the children drive her bus Thursday as she dropped students off after school in Valparaiso, a small city about 50 miles Southeast of Chicago. Yeah. Valparaiso. <clears throat> Valparaiso. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, uh, Valpo for short, by the way. <laughs> Chief Deputy Jeff Biggs said in a news statement that three students took turns driving a short distance in a rural area. Hmm. Uh, she was arrested when she went back to uh, the township bus barn to pick up her paycheck, according to the news release. Hmm. That's That's got to be a bummer yeah. when you're going to pick up yeah. your paycheck. Yeah. Probably thinking you're going to have a great weekend. Or well, maybe she to, was done with a job and she's like, this is how I'm going to get out of this thing. I'm going to let these kids drive this bus till they <laughs> catch me. Uh, she's facing charges of neglect of a dependent, a felony, and was mm. fired by the Porter Township and the bus service provider. Oh, uh, The Porter tough. Township School Corporation is angered and disappointed in the actions of this driver, Stacy Schmidt, the Porter Township School Corporation. Corporation superintendent said in an email to the paper, the safety of our students is top priority. The, this individual's actions are not reflective of the hard work, dedication, and professionalism of our staff. So, you know, it's just, well, you're, it's just your, you know, standard run of the mill, not our fault yeah, right, statement yeah. after something happens. Right. Well, you know, all know the high standard bus drivers are kept. Too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'd like to say my bus driver growing up, Miss Mansfield, she's passed away. Mm -hmm. Greatest bus driver in the history of bus drivers. I love that lady. And I'm not even joking. She was awesome. Bus 19 in Fayette, everybody who rode it, most awesome bus that ever was. She was awesome. I just want to throw that in there because I love Miss Mansfield. I always felt sorry for bus drivers because... Um, it be tough. Man. I'm sure other schools are not like our school, but I always took classes at the AVC, which was like a separate... Yeah. Uh, yeah, the vocational school. Yeah, it was like a vocational yeah. school. You could take some classes right. like shop and, you right. know, auto. It was over there by repair. the projects, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I always took classes over there just because you had like a, you know, short little 10-minute ride to yes. there and back. Right. So you had shorter classes and you yeah. had to ride on the bus. But mm-hmm. I tell you what, I would not want to be. I don't, I'm assuming kids are just as terrible now as they were when I was in school. Probably. If not worse. They do a lot of like anti bullying and loving each other type stuff now, mm-hmm. you know, just from seeing what comes home from my kids, which is like way different, you know? Yeah. Like I would like make fun of somebody and my kids are like, don't do that. That's mean. And I'm like, well, <laughs> shut up, nerds. <laughs> nerds! <laughs> <laughs> actually hudson will get into it with me he's a lot like me <laughs> snowflake <laughs> yeah hudson's not a snowflake but libby is but yeah yeah bus drivers got it tough they man. got it rough and even back when i was in school they had it rough and they could still they could beat you you know mm-hmm. back, you know they, you, it was like the wild wild west when i was in school it didn't matter but i tell you what if this was a situation where you know these kids were acting up and the lady's like will you shut up if i let you drive the bus you think <laughs> right. you can do it better, you better get better up here and do it and drive this See, show me how it's done oh wise one <laughs> if that's what happened i'm yeah. in i'm in right. her i'm in on her side you know who we need to talk to <laughs> we should have had on was uh regina from church she's a bus she, driver she okay. drives it uh for libby school and libby oh, and school. That? yeah yeah, which everybody loves her. You right. Know? I'm sure she's awesome at it. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, that she would have been interested to get her perspective because <laughs> she's got kids hollering and screaming and all that the whole time. Tell them to be quiet and they won't. Yeah. They just make them louder. Right, right. Yeah, they just, I mean, what do you do to them? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you can spank them. Right, yeah. You can't do that. You can't kick them off on the side of the road. <laughs> right. So what do you, you just got to endure it, I guess. I guess so. I don't know. It's rough. That's right. I'd be wearing some beats or something. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Have your earbuds in. Yes. Can't hear a train coming or anything. <laughs>
right, so let's move on here to our uh, article from the Business Insider. College students say they can't send in their absentee ballots because they don't know where to buy stamps. I just like to say, if you don't know where to buy stamps, <laughs> or do we really want you voting anyways? <laughs> you know, like, I mean, that should maybe disqualify you from the voting process. Well, do kids, do they know? Okay, I know they know what Amazon is. True. But can you, can you have well, an they, Amazon Prime account but not know where the, I mean, I guess you can not know where the post office is. I guess it all just comes to your door. Like UPS brings it or, I know the federal post office brings a lot. Right. And uh, FedEx, too. So, I don't know. I guess when you can't email your ballot or you can't text your absentee ballot, yes, right. it really kind of leaves you in a rough spot. Here we go. Democrats are counting on Generation Z, many of whom recently gained the right to vote to help turn Congress blue in the midterm elections. But 49 cents may be all it takes to keep these post-millennials <laughs> from exercising their <laughs> civic duty. On Tuesday, a Fairfax County, Virginia official said they are noticing a disturbing trend. Young people failing to mail in their absentee ballots because they don't know how to get a stamp. Golly. Lisa Connors of the Fairfax County Office of Public Affairs ran a focus group this summer comprised of college students interning in various county departments. One thing that came up, which I had heard from my own kids, but I thought they were just nerdy. <laughs> I like her style. <laughs> uh, was that students will go through the process of applying for a mail-in absentee ballot. They will fill out the ballot, and then they don't know where to get stamps. Uh, Connors told WTOP, that seems like that seems to be the hump that they can't get across. Connors went on to say that many in the focus group said they knew lots of people who did not send in their ballots because it was too much of a hassle or they didn't know where to get a stamp. That is a real hassle, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> dropping it in a mailbox is just, I mean, I mean good. I mean, you know, trying trying to see it from their point of view and, and you know, be in their shoes, put myself in their shoes, you've gone through the hassle of trying to get an absentee ballot, and then you're like, ah, oh, I, yeah, right. I don't have a stamp. Well, first of I all, would probably just uh, I would probably just throw it in the trash too. Well, I never have absentee voted, you know. But I've always done it in person. Mm -hmm. um, the one time I should have done it was when Hudson had like his first heart surgery, and it was like the presidential election when Obama got elected, which right. wouldn't have mattered because As Alabama's say, voting. No. yeah, for whoever Alabama Alabama voted for the Republican, regardless. It didn't matter how many right. votes you had, John. Yeah, right. Obama wouldn't have got Alabama. <laughs> no, <laughs> but. Uh, uh, but that's the only presidential election I've never voted in. Right. Cause he was having surgery on day, the day to vote. But anyways, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I always assumed that absentee ballots had like, you know, prepaid, you know, government postage. On you it. think they would. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you could, it would just make it easy. Mm -hmm. But I guess you don't. would have thought that a, one of our, political parties by now would have introduced legislation to make that a thing. I guarantee you, know? you it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you that's coming down the pipe. Well, I don't know. It may, it may depend on the outcome oh, of the right, midterms. True. <laughs> uh, it says, as a way to combat the absenteeism, uh, or I'm sorry, the abstention for the upcoming midterm elections, the county is focusing on raising awareness of in-person absentee voting which students can do while they're home from fall breaks. Another potential hurdle. Um, I'm sorry. Hudson sending me like all kind of stuff on Instagram. Just block the screen. Another potential <laughs> hurdle that the country is worried about is voters mixing up their home address where they are registered to vote with the address that they, they want their absentee ballot shipped to. Um, this mix up on the ballot. Then it, if this is a mix up on the ballot, then it's rendered invalid. Um, and for any of the Generation Z people listening to us, we're probably the number one podcast among Generation Z from what I've seen. Um, you can buy stamps from the U.S. Postal Service online and in person, as well as other online retailers like Amazon and Stamps.com, banks, gas stations, pharmacies, and big box retailers like Walmart also sell them. So those are all outlets where you could get a stamp to mail in your absentee ballot because we want you to be able to have your voice heard 
in the electoral process. Yeah, but will they take Bitcoin? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> or uh, can can you uh, can you Amazon pay? I guess you could if you're buying from Amazon. Oh, and uh, here's a little caveat, or here's a little add-on. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service also has a policy that it mails absentee ballots, whether or not they contain postage. Oh, perfect. Instead of returning the ballot to sender, they charge the local election board. So, so it is kind of like a postage paid, even though it doesn't yeah, say it. It's like right. a top secret well, postage paid. Yeah. So I feel like the program. biggest thing is is just too big of a hassle. Right. And we've all been there. Oh, like, yeah. hey, I filled something out, or I committed to do something, and now it's time to do it, and I don't want to do it. Earlier today, I was tasked with ordering the, the baby's uh, Halloween costume. Oh, okay. And she asked me if I did it, and... I said, no, I didn't get a chance to. And then I said, well, no, I I had a chance, but you told me to do that when I was eating. I totally (laughs) forgot about it. So, Are y'all doing like a family costume thing? I want to do that every year and we never do. Okay. uh, Probably because they don't sell. Uh, (laughs) The only only costume I can find in my size is like Godzilla (laughs) or maybe King Kong. What about the uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man? (laughs) That would be a huge yeah. costume, you know? Well, Eli's going as Dash, and he okay. wants Baby Joe Psy to be uh, Baby Jack Jack from the movie, from the okay. Incredibles movie. Yeah, right. And Mr. Incredible would be, uh, you know, perfect. That's doable but for you. I don't want to do the spandex. I think so. you could do it. I do it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's do it. Let's make this happen, And, Tiny. you know, of course, Tara, my wife, she doesn't like anything that has to do with humor or fun or entertainment <laughs> she can't stand it you know she's she's you know she's a preacher's kid so sure, she, she yeah. grew up yeah where, no fun <laughs> no fun not allowed. Allowed out. fun is a sin yes fun's right. not allowed yes. so she's already said that she we've is, all seen footloose <laughs> we know how it is when you live with a preacher yeah. yes okay so you know she she's she is on record she's not dressing up she's not going to be uh last a girl or okay or violet or any of that right. so well, I don't dress up either. Right. I'm actually in Tara's camp. I don't like <laughs> dressing up. No fun. I, I mean, it's just not no fun. It's just like, that's just not my thing, you yeah, know? I'm just yeah. not into dressing up. So, wasn't into it when I was a kid, but I still did it. Right. Because everybody expected me to do it. And that's the type of kid I was. So, I live my life for other people. I don't live it for me. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah Self-sacrifice. That's what yeah. you're about. Self-sacrifice on Halloween, dress up like a mummy. <laughs> Which mom remembers, I dressed up like a mummy one time. One time she made me a costume. I don't know. I had like this monster mask that was foam. You know, this is like the 80s. So right. We didn't have all the fancy stuff. And I don't know where I got it. And then she just like cut this. It was like a bath rug. I don't know. It was like some material that was like bath rug material that I wore over me that it looked kind of hairy. And that was my costume. <laughs> I actually liked that one. Yeah. I remember that one. I really enjoyed it. So I always liked the uh, the costumes when we were kids where it was like, okay, I'm Wolverine, but I'm Wolverine if he lost his powers and grew a second head. (laughs) (laughs) Where it's like very, very nuanced, you know? (laughs) Yes. Uh, Okay, so moving along here to Yahoo. This is my last article. Mm -hmm. Um, Mountain goats are being airlifted out out of a national park because they crave human pee. Say that again. They crave human pee. Okay. Uh, Olympic National Park located in... Are they being airlifted to New Orleans? (laughs) Maybe so. (laughs) That would be perfect for them. I couldn't resist. (laughs) Olympic National Park located in Washington State's Olympic Peninsula is faced with a daunting challenge, removing a ballooning mountain goat population that's developed a strong appetite for human pee. Mountain goats aren't a native species in the park. Since their introduction in the 1920s, their numbers have blossomed into a staggering 700 ungulates. I don't know what this word means. Wow. Anyway, 700. I didn't know. I I mean, if you've been there since the 1920s, I didn't know that. I thought at that point you were just considered. Yeah, like native. Yeah, native. I don't know. I know. I think it's it's sometime around the 1920s when Sullivans were introduced (laughs) to America. Well, I know... uh, (laughs) Fire ants came to America through Mobile in the 1700s, and they're still considered a, not a native species. So huh. They're an invasive species, which fire ants are, oh, they're of the devil. And kudzu. Yeah, kudzus. Man. Yeah. Did you have some kudzu jelly one time? Yeah. It's actually pretty good. 
I remember that. Or it was like jam. It wasn't jelly. Yeah, I've had it. It's just yeah. not bad. And it's, I don't think it's worth it, you know, sweeping across no, the land like, like a plague. Taking over everything that we have. <laughs> but it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, yeah. Uh, if if kudzu, if we could somehow figure out for kudzu, like get everybody high, you know, like I don't know. Like has anybody tried smoking it before? Or what if we could somehow cross kudzu with like corn so that we could grow like corn on Mars. Yeah, right. That would <laughs> you be like know? Corn everywhere. That would have really helped out Matt Damon That's true. when he That's was true. stuck there. It's true. We'd like to say a big shout out to the United States Agricultural Department for coming up with arid corn, which is being able which was able to be grown in arid climates around the world. Did yeah. a whole lot to combat, you know, poverty and uh famine across the uh-huh. world. Uh, that was back in the forties, by the way. So GMOs. Just, yeah. Good job, engineers. That's right. Yeah. Gotta all give you, me some all of you that. anti-GMO folks. <laughs> we came up with that long before you were even on this train. <laughs> yes. And uh, humanity was we starved. Saved, yeah, hadn't been for that. We saved millions of people in this world with that. So, anyways, back to mountain goats. Uh, <laughs> mountain goats aren't a native species in the park. Oh, I went through that. They've been there since the nineteen twenties. Now, with humans flooding the area and routinely relieving themselves on themselves on various hiking trails, the goats have developed an insatiable thirst for urine, which serves <laughs> as a strong source of salt and minerals. Uh, acting in concert with the National Park Services and the USDA Forest, Ser- Forest Service, park authorities have begun tagging, blindfolding, and airlifting goats to the nearby forest in North Cascades via helicopter. Fitted with GPS collars, the goats are ferried in pairs to nine uh, sites in the Mount Baker um, slash some word I can't pronounce National Forest per a motherboard report. Uh, The sites should provide a more hospitable environment for the surging goat tribe where they can roam free of human interlopers. Um, The MPS aims to reduce the goats' numbers dramatically to the tune of approximately 90% of the projected 2018 mountain goat population, or approximately 625 to 675 mountain goats. Uh, the remaining 10% will be dealt with via opportunistic ground and helicopter-based lethal removal of mountain goats. Okay, now that sounds fun. That sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> with the ter- when the terrain is too challenging to corral the goats with a helicopter. Uh, last year, it was suggested that shotguns or high-powered rifles would do the trick, although the park insists its first priority is relocation. Um, with minerals necessary for their diet scant... Um, The goats have developed a strong predilection for human pee and sweat, which they can find in abundance while foraging through the park's 1,442 square mile domain. Okay, so so why is this a problem? Is is there just too many goats where people are hiking? Okay, let's uh, let's go here to uh, what one of these park rangers says. The nature of mountain goat human interactions can vary widely, such as humans observing mountain goats from several hundred meters away across a ridge, mountain goats approaching visitors, hazing events, and hazardous interactions such as an October 2010 fatality. Hmm. Um, it's kind of like, to me, it's kind of like bears, you know, like when bears figured out, you know, hey, this human guy's carrying food, <laughs> right? you know, in his backpack or whatever. Got a picnic basket. Yeah, right. He's got a picnic basket. And so we had to train everybody. Like, you know, if you're spending a night, you want to do a bear bag. Mm, Hang it up high. Yeah, hang it up high and don't have any food around you and all that. So maybe you will live when the bear comes around. Don't sleep with sausages in your pockets. Right, yeah. Put the Slim Jims (laughs) in the bear bag and all that. So I feel it's like that, that the mountain goats have learned that humans pee. And they like pee because they need their minerals. And so yeah. when they see humans, they're like hassling the humans, <laughs> you know, and probably like a bunch of perverted yeah, leches, <laughs> probably like head them and all that. <laughs> Cause goats, like we discussed before this one, we went on the air. I don't like goats. I don't think goats are cool. I don't think they're cute because I've had them ram me into electric fence several <laughs> times and they are not fun. They're not fun animals. You know what? They're they jerks. Will, they'll hurt you. They have horns and they will use them on you. you <laughs> the know? goat is, is the sign of the devil for That's a reason. True. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. <laughs> You know, uh, and Jesus didn't tell Peter to feed his goats. I'll say that much. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, 
Uh, <laughs> the goats are going to burn. Yes. Uh, authorities can implement fertility control, largely because the animals are so hard to corral, and there's no approved contraceptive available to quell their birth rates. So, so how do they do that? Well, Is I, that just giving them a bunch of vasectomies? I would think castration, yeah. yeah <laughs> that'd be what you'd do. Gotcha. The goats put on a lot of weight then. <laughs> yeah. But Quick I feel carry. like killing them from a helicopter sounds... Like the best plan here. Now, goats are tasty. <laughs> have you ever eaten goat? I have. Yeah, it's pretty yeah, tasty. Not bad. Yeah, not yeah. bad. Yeah, not bad. Been I mean, like like any game meat, you got to prepare it right. Right, yeah. But, you know. But a goat's pretty good. Yeah, not I bad. I ate a goat. I ain't afraid of eating goat. No. Yeah. I'll do it with pleasure because they're buttholes. Goats are buttholes. <laughs> I'll just say it. I just have to put it out there. I don't like them. Sorry <laughs> if you're a goat lover and you got goat friends and all that, but... I'm just not into goats. Not my thing. Because they're oh, me. Gotcha. They hurt me. <laughs> they hurt me before. Well, talking about goats, our next story is about lab-grown meat. Have oh, you, uh, yeah. Are you familiar at all with lab-grown meat? It's a thing. I don't know. I mean, I've heard of it, but I don't know a whole lot about lab-grown meat. Well, this comes from businessinsider.com, and it's a, a new lab-grown meat startup that Ooh. has apparently overcome a, uh, a barrier recently. All right. And the article starts off, a handful of startups around the world are racing to make real meat in facilities that look like breweries rather than farms. Okay. In giant steel containers akin to brewers' vats, cells from pigs, cows, and chickens will be carefully monitored and multiplied. Then they'll be formed into burgers, sausages, and meatballs, Hmm. all without a single animal being slaughtered. Hmm. At least that's the vision. Well, I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> we'll say if we could uh, combine pig and cow together into <laughs> one meat, you know. I got something that's up your alley, by the way. <laughs> one meat to rule barbecue forever. <laughs> Down in Selma, Alabama, there's a place that sells this thing that is pork and chicken together. Oh. Oh, it's delicious. It is it's delicious. Have you ever had a turduncan? No, but I've, I've always wanted. Yeah, I've one. always wanted. I've one never too. had one, yeah. but I've always wanted. Yeah, I've one. wanted one. And I've heard that you can take a turduncan and shove it inside a pig. Oh, for and, real? And, you know, it's a predict predicted. So it's like it's like a uh, what are the little Russian dolls? Yeah, the, yeah, the nesting dolls. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Okay, that sounds right. What if you take the pig, shove it in a cow? Oh, oh. now we're talking. I know what we're doing for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Take the cow, shove it in a giraffe. I mean, let's just keep going. We end up with a blue whale on the barbecue. <laughs> okay. And we take the, what's the smallest one, a duck? Yeah, right. We take the duck and we put, what well, can no, we put inside see, the duck? It's a chicken in a duck in a turkey, right? Well, Tur- what can we put turducken? in the chicken? Ooh. Like some shrimp? Yeah, a gopher? <laughs> I don't know. Take a squirrel. A squirrel, there we go. <laughs> take take shrimp, yep. stuff it in a squirrel, yep. stuff it in a chicken, stuff, stuff it in a duck, stuff it in a pig, stuff it in a cow. Yes. Stuff it in I mean, a buffalo. Buffalo, I like that. I like that. <laughs> stuff it in a buffalo. Okay. Or a right. moose. Yeah, moose would probably work. <laughs> moose are huge. Yeah. yeah, they are like, I mean, they're startling huge. <laughs> We don't get to see a lot of moose in Alabama. But no. my cousin lives in Utah. I'll put a video up every once in a while, one around his house. And mm-hmm. you're like, man, that thing is massive. Yeah. It's like bigger than a horse. They're large. Very large. But anyway, <laughs> this Sorry. one startup, they're trying to we do away with all. <laughs> They're trying to do away with all that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they're trying to grow turduncans in a vat somewhere. All right. Uh, until now, lab-grown meat startups have faced a key barrier that some that is something of a deal breaker for the industry. The food for the sales comes from slaughtered cows, called fetal bovine serum, or okay. simply serum. The liquid remains the standard means of coaxing animal cells to pro- proliferate. Um, I wonder if you if you go there, can you just get a can you just order a glass of. Uh, a fetal bovine serum? I don't know. <laughs> you know? I don't want to get a straight shot here. <laughs> the founders of the new startup called Meetable think that they found a way around the serum problem. So they're thinking they can find a way to coax animal cells to proliferate and multiply hmm. without using this fetal bovine serum that did come from a slaughtered animal somewhere okay. along the chain. All right. Uh, rather than relying on cells that can't grow without a serum-like food substance, Meatables founders use, and oh my goodness, 
pluripotent stem cells, okay. which possess the unique ability to turn any type of cell from muscle to fat without the serum. Other lab-grown meat startups have avoided using the stem cells because they are notoriously hard to control in a lab environment, yet Meatables team claims that they've developed a secret sauce to making them behave. It's probably a Thousand Island dressing, don't you think? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to be giving away their secrets, but... <laughs> it involves proprietary technology created in partnership with Roger Penderson, a stem cell biologist and founder of the University of Cambridge Stem, stem Cell Institute, and Mark Cotter, a Cambridge, Cambridge neurosurgery uh, clinician scientist. Uh, the serum is out the door for us. We don't need it in any way, they say. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. They're uh, they're growing meat, and they're they're saying they can do it without this serum. But uh, what do you think about the whole lab grown meat thing? In I mean, general, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of it. I like my meat killed, uh, <laughs> yeah, more naturally. <laughs> <laughs> you want it natural. <laughs> Well, I'll just say this. Uh, it makes me feel like a king when I know someone killed it and brought it for me. Right. Me. So I just enjoy that. You know, it probably, I don't want to get on PETA's bad list or anything. Right. But I just, I just, I'm just, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not anti GMO crops going back to the whole, you know, <laughs> yes. air and climate corn we developed. Uh, but, I'm just very wary of the meat stuff, you right. know, like, and maybe that's because I'm just not like familiar enough with the process. Yes. I will say I've never, and, and probably there's, I would imagine there's not a lot of people out there who have been able to try lab grown meat yet. Yeah. That's a good point. And I'm not going to be a fan of it if it tastes like it's, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's got to taste like a real it's got to taste like the real thing. Yeah. Like on the one hand, you know, I'm not a devout hunter like some people, but yeah. I, I've, I've hunted on occasion. Me too. And so like on the one hand, kind of like you are, I, I tend to be a little bit, you know, a little bit wary of it. But yeah. at the same time, I mean, I realize that this technology here could potentially, you know, feed a lot of people out there. And, right. you know, maybe, and again, I'm not an expert. You'd have to talk to an expert. You'd have to talk to the to the team at Meetable about yeah. this. Meetable, good name. <laughs> but I imagine that, you know, growing meat in a, in a vat somewhere could potentially be better than having yeah. herds and herds and herds of cattle, you know, right. grazing on the land and, well, you're going to put a lot of farmers Farting out in of the work, atmosphere. Tommy. You don't care about ranchers and farmers, <laughs> then that tells me all I need to know about you. Okay. Are they not going to go work at the, uh, at the, the meat lab? Plant. <laughs> the meatable plant? <laughs> Riding herd over the <laughs> vats of hamburger meat or whatever. And they'll talk about the days when they used to ride the, the horses and, right. and rope cattle. And yeah. when men were real ranchers before That's they right. just, their job was to pull this little lever. That's right. While wearing uh, safety goggles. Yeah. Just in like one of those nets <laughs> over their cowboy <laughs> A little lab coat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Can't smoke Marlboros in there. That's our future cowboys. That's right. Can't smoke Marlboros in there like real men do. The boss yeah. is yelling at them because they've been on break for 35 minutes since, and their break was supposed to be just 30. That's right. <laughs> like, yeah. Time is money. We got meat to grow. <laughs> Get t- back out there on the line. I'm just, I just, I just don't know. I mean, maybe it's because it's new, but I just, I don't know that I'm going to. I'm not going to be the first one to try. <laughs> no, me. Either. Somebody's going to have to talk me into trying it. <laughs> yes. And when they do, I may love it. But I'm just not going to go out there and be seeking it out. If they want me to try it, they're probably they're going to have to tell me that they dug it out of some ancient sarcophagus <laughs> and it's three thousand years old, <laughs> or else yeah. I'm not going to want it. Our petition didn't really take <laughs> off like we thought it would, did it? Oh, at last I checked it, we had eleven backers. Okay, so right. I'm proud. I'm got proud a little of that. way to go. A little ways to go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's I, that's twice as many as I thought I'd get. True. <laughs> now I'm all for ending famine, you see, yeah. and this could be a good way to do it. You know, if we could produce meat in mass quantities in smaller areas and could market that out to impoverished areas around the world, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. I also think I should be allowed to raise a cow in my yard, kill it, and eat it as I see fit. You know? I agree. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, I think that's, you know, personal choice. That's right. You yeah. know? Yes. Yeah. I mean, some people want to grow their own dope. I mm-hmm. would rather just grow my <laughs> own cow. Yeah. Kill it, dress it, eat it. Are you growing cows now, though? No. It's against the law. <laughs> you know? Man, it's the man. There's zoning. The man's they, keeping they zone you down. me out. Man. They zone me out. So, used to, this is completely off the subject, but not really. <laughs> 
so you see the deke house on alabama used to be where like the walk of champions is now right and every year during rush you know at a certain point they would tie a goat up out front you know to mm-hmm. scare everybody you know all their pledges or whatever right and uh <clears throat> a bunch of nerds uh got them in trouble because you can't have livestock in city limits and so they couldn't do it anymore which to me was like why are you just ruining somebody's fun just because you can (laughs) it didn't make sense to me but anyways excuse me uh yeah you can't have livestock in the city limits so bummer further out if i move further out i could have a cow I know that's what you always hear people say. Well, if you don't like it, just move. But sometimes that's a little harder. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> and it's, it's easier yeah, said than done. I know. Sometimes I like, go, oh, "You don't like the president? Move to Canada." Well, like, man, I don't want to move to Canada. I want the president to be like, you know, a good person or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not about Trump, by the way. Before I get a bunch of <laughs> hate from Trump supporters, this is in general, president in general. So, because it gets said by both sides, right. anyways. And there's not going to be a president that every single person likes. No, no, not at all. Not at all. So, unfortunately, until I get elected. Okay, we're here with our community news. for, And we want to start out by thanking our sponsor, the world famous. What's that name again? Who are they? Cajun Curl. Oh, yeah. The Cajun Curl. <laughs> We're sitting here watching the LSU Tigers and old. Miss. Really hard to podcast with yeah, a football very, game very on hard. in the background. You may have noticed we've been a little, <laughs> a little off. A little distracted. Uh, right now, LSU's up 21 to 3, in case you don't watch this and you're listening to it Monday. Uh, but the, you know what they love down uh, in Baton Rouge? That would be some Cajun Curl oh, Bayou yeah. blended spice. Uh, the Bengal Tigers, Mike the Tiger, that's what he eats all his meat with. Coach Ogeron. Coach Ogeron loves it, loves it. Uh, but we want to thank At Cajun least I Curl. think that's what he said yeah. about Cajun Curl. Oh, yeah. No. He could have been talking yeah. about his offense. Did you ever watch his like <laughs> press conferences with uh, with a translator on? It's pretty amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds kind of like that Burger King commercial it we really listened to does. earlier. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Anyway, so we want to thank World Famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice for all their support. Check them out at CajunCurl.com. You can order their spice and their Cajun Curl chip cutter there. Uh, on, you can do that at CajunCurl.com. It was created on the Elm Bayou in Evangeline Parish, Louisiana. It's a seasoning that goes on everything. If you like cooking or eating, this is a spice for you. Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice goes well on chicken, beef, pork, potatoes, goat, and anything else you can think of putting it on. Their spiral potato cutter is absolutely amazing. It's easy to use, it's easy to clean, and it'll allow you to make your own chips using the Cajun Curl Spice. And I think we talked about it, but uh, they put on the Cajun Curl Facebook page, which you should definitely follow if you're not, a video of their Cajun Curl Cutter. Uh, if you want to just get an idea of what it does and how mm-hmm. it works, and, and you'll see it's like revolutionary in the chip game. So, And if that doesn't suit your fancy, they have a video of me and John eating a That's chili cheesesteak. That's true. <laughs> yes, if you want to see me and Tiny, go to the Cajun Curl page and like it. And we're not king shaman if that's what you're into. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but uh, <laughs> we are married. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on their website, CajunCurl.com, you can not only order the original Bayou blended spice and the Cajun Curl chip cutter, but you'll find recipes that are great. You can locate your nearest retailer there, or you can order your own there. Locally in Tuscaloosa, in the Tuscaloosa Northport area, it's available at Bowles on Skyland Boulevard, South's Finest Meats, and at Piggly Wiggly here in New- Northport. So uh, if you're around this area listening, go check it out. Uh, but if for whatever reason you're not local and you still got to get that spice, you can always get it 24 7 at CajunCurl.com. Right. Yeah. Brandon is ready to ship you a container of it right now. He is standing on the ready. With one already loaded up, yep. ready to come to you to make your next meal the best that it can be. Uh, all of their products are made in the USA, so not only do you enjoy the taste of Cajun Curl, but you also feel like a real American while you're enjoying your meal. 
It's all natural. It's low salt, and it has a little kick to it, but it doesn't burn your lips. World famous Cajun Curl Bayou Blended Spice. Taste the spice, but not the heat. Uh, check them out at www.cajuncurl.com. Uh, thanks. We thank them again for their support. We thank y'all for supporting them. Um, and if you haven't tried it, try it now. I don't know what else to tell you. All right. Well, on to community news. Yes. We've got some news this week. We do. We uh, do. Uh, Ms. Sadie Azard. She sent us an email. Yeah. And I'm not going to read it in uh, in detail, but it, she did say that uh, she had some of her settings on Facebook that was <laughs> made her review unable right, yeah, to. Yeah, she went to private. She set yes. her like settings to a little more. She upped her privacy mm-hmm. level, which probably, when you get two guys from Alabama snooping around your <laughs> Facebook page, probably what you want to do. <laughs> I can't say that I blame her for that. Yes. I, know, I mean, we are married, but yeah, I got it. But you can look at my my Facebook page is a wide open. Right. Anyone can look at anything I've ever posted on Facebook on my Facebook page. Go go stalk me. Send me a friend request. I mean, I'm, t- I'm specifically talking to you, Sadie. You can send me a <laughs> friend request if you want to. We'll be good friends. And uh, but anyway, she sent us an email and she said that she made it visible again. And so okay. I told her we would be sure to shout it out this show. Yeah, Here it is. right. Uh, five stars. I have been binge listening since I found this awesome podcast a month ago. Awesome. If she's listened to all of them, Ooh, let me apologize because I yeah. know those first several were rough. I mean, really, but, uh, <laughs> most of them are rough <laughs> yes. if you ask me, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. I don't know why you want to put yourself through that kind of torture, <laughs> but thank you so uh, much. Some people are masochist or sadist <laughs> or whatever. Sadiest. <laughs> Sadiest. <laughs> Oh, that's a good, that's a rim shot. And, uh, she says, now I'm all caught up and I'm going to have to wait a week for the next one. No! <laughs> love these guys' take on the week's odd news stories and love the intro music too. Thank you so much, oh, Sadie. Yeah, Sadie. Like I said, we can be friends. I'll be your best friend for forever. And I'll just say, uh, Sadie. We've read the review now, so shields up. Yeah, <laughs> you right. can, you yeah, can you go can back, go to, back private to private. <laughs> yeah, put everything back <laughs> to normal. Uh, but no, thank you so much. It's really kind. And she's from the UK, which she is. I, you know, yeah. I just like to point out to everyone that we are worldwide. And that's not just a joke that I keep saying. <laughs> we're definitely global. Yes. We're, we're the international. International, yes, right, yeah, because the Earth's flat. Everybody knows that, so we can't be global. Uh, we could be planal, yeah, right. <laughs> for, yes, for our buddy Gabe out yes. there, we're planal. <laughs> yeah, we're planal. <laughs> but uh, we really appreciate uh, Sadie and uh, and all of our listeners everywhere. We, you guys can give us a review. We'll be just as nice to you as we are to her. She's all the way from the UK, and she's not afraid of us, so. Uh, you shouldn't be either. Well, probably because she has an ocean between us. That's very but, true. That's very true. <laughs> but to all our international listeners. Yeah. We'll take all international <laughs> reviews we can get, you know? Yes. Yes. So, uh, yeah, we appreciate you, Sadie. And thanks for listening. And tell everybody over there about us. And you guys get together, listen to us, make fun of the way we talk. Yes. And the fact that we can't read very well and or string all- together <laughs> coaching thoughts. So. And all you and your English friends can listen to us and feel superior. Right. And be glad that we broke away, yeah, right. you know, yes, 200 that, plus years ago. That's right. Because I mean, <laughs> we did whip your butt in the war. I just want to say that. But uh, other than that, we're cool. You know? But it worked out for the best because we now have a reality TV star for president. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I mean, look, they got to be sitting back going, well, you know what? Maybe it wasn't such a bad deal after all. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, think I guess it's all right. Uh, I, I will say I did read an article once. I think I brought this up on the podcast before that said that the Southern accent was the closest to like the old English accent that we have left in the United States. I'm curious if that's true or not. Right. Like when they listen to us, is it a little easier than listening to somebody the case, from Boston? We have really, yeah. really strayed. <laughs> yeah, oh, I know. I know. I know we have. But yeah, I mean, I just wonder if it's easier to understand us than it is to understand somebody from Boston or whatever. You know? That's a good question. Because yeah. I have trouble understanding people from Boston. Yeah. Yeah. They have like, crazy you know long a's and stuff mm-hmm. you know pock and all that stuff so 
That's my that's my Boston impression. <laughs> yeah, let me, let me translate. That, that was park a car. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Or like you know khakis. Now you may think I'm talking about pants, but in Boston, this is you know as car as car keys exactly <laughs> right. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. And that's not all. We also have a oh, voicemail. We got more. Yeah, we have a voicemail. I wonder who it's from. <laughs> well, this voicemail is from none other than Mr. Johnny Irons. That's right. Everybody should check out his show, his podcast, if you like, you know, super awesome podcast. Yes. Yeah. He called us this week and he had this to say. Oh boy. Here we go. Hey, it's Johnny Boy here. Hey, uh, for lunch, like on payday. I go across the street from the shop to this um, Asian supermarket. It's like the Korean, South Korean, North Korean supermarket called Yoa Yamaya. <laughs> anyway, I got this stuff. You want to talk about odd? It's called Calpico. And it's like original flavor. I'm like, it doesn't say anything what it tastes like. Dude, it's like this weird, sour, sweet, tropical milk pop. It rocks. Anyway. I'm going to put a, a picture of it in the uh, Earth Oddity podcast face group, uh, Facebook group. So, all right, later, guys. All right. Okay. So he put a picture of a... Of a this is like a soft drink. But he it's like an Asian yeah. soft drink, but it's right. like fruity, but it's milk. Yeah. And it's non-carbonated. Uh, um, I, don't I will know. say, man, you can go to uh, Asian supermarkets and find some interesting stuff. Yeah. I'm not going to so. knock it. No, because no. you know I like to, I like to you know sample look, food from all over the world. Well, look, look, we're watching Louisiana here. We've talked about Cajun curl. Yes, I mean, if you've never had Cajun food, they they eat some weird stuff too. You oh know, yeah, crawfish absolutely. Crawfish and uh, crabs and all kind of stuff is crazy. So I'm not knocking. I think it. I'm I think I'm going to hit up ours and uh, see if I can't find something like it. And okay, and maybe. Maybe through me drinking this uh, <laughs> this milk. Cal Pico? <laughs> this <laughs> Cal Pico. <laughs> maybe somehow I will be connecting to our audience through okay. uh, through, <laughs> through some strange like Asian a... beverage. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds That's good. my plan. That's good. You to make sure it's not a non-alcoholic or something, though. I'm going to get you in trouble with your father-in-law. <laughs> That's true. He <laughs> <laughs> sees it in your fridge and you like put on a prayer list or something. Well, he wouldn't be able to read it. so <laughs> <laughs> He may just assume then, you know. <laughs> yeah, I have to assume that. So it's like, you know, when they uh, did that whole, when I was becoming a deacon, they come to your house and talk to you and your mm-hmm. wife. And I mean, it's not like super formal or anything. It's just basically like, hey, let me let you know what you're getting into and all that. Right. Uh, but I was like, it's look, not guys, a joke. I told, Quit smiling, John. <laughs> this, well, Ralph was one of them. It's Ralph. Oh, and, uh, man. And uh, Mr. Clarty, Randall Clarty. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I told him I was like, look, you guys can go anywhere in the house, but don't open the fridge. <laughs> so I was like, Can't look in the fridge, guy. Just want to freak him out a little bit. <laughs> you know, they can do whatever you need to do, but they don't, it's not like they come and expect your house. So they're just like, hey, you know, we'll pray with you. No, they, that's what they have the the FBI for. But they just ask your kids, like, does Daddy ever drink any beers? <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. Daddy mow the grass on a real hot day? You ever see him kicking back a cold one? <laughs> yeah. That's just what they do. So, yeah. does Daddy uh, work on the Sabbath? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. 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 Well, they got to make sure your house is in order. You, you got, yeah. you know, yeah, all that. I guess. You I ever really seen know. a rated R movie? <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. uh, does Daddy let you watch anything other than Veggie Tales? <laughs> <laughs> They ask you for your password and look at your Netflix yeah. viewing history. Uh, I don't. We uh, <laughs> we actually borrow somebody else's Netflix. <laughs> oh, borrow. Yeah. Borrow, okay. Borrow. It. When yes. are you going to give it back to them? Whatever they ask for. <laughs> they can have it back today. <laughs> really? When they change their password. They can change the password whenever they want to. We'll be locked out for forever. So yes. Whoa, that's my dog. That's Jay, Jay Barker. Barker. That's Jay Barker. That's Jay Barker <laughs> shouting out everybody. I think he's saying wrap it up. Yeah, he might be. So, yeah. You have been listening to Earth Oddity Podcast, and we thank you so much for listening to us no matter where you get us, whether it's Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Overcast, Acast, CastBox, Podcast Republic, 
iTunes, iTunes Radio, yep. uh, Heart Radio, sure. Tune In, Spotify. <laughs> we thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Follow us on our Twitter account. That's at underscore Earth Oddity. Same for our Instagram. It's been very active in Instagram this week. <laughs> it's been twice as twice. active as it That's normally right. is. That's right. We've doubled our output this week. <laughs> You uh, can email the show. Yeah, email the we show. We are earthoddity at planetmail.net. That's uh, right. We'd love to hear from you, and we'd love, we enjoyed hearing from you, Ms. Sadie Ezzard. Yes, so. thank you so much, Sadie. Uh, you can always call. It's not necessarily Sadie because it would be an international call, but it's right. number 662-493-2059. Follow us on our Facebook group, our Earth Oddity Facebook group. Join that. Interact with us. We'd like to interact with you all, too. A lot of funny stuff up in there. And we hope everyone has a great week. That's right. We will see y'all next week. Love you guys. Earth Oddity for the French Radio Network signing off. This has been a very odd production. Thanks for listening.